Hello everyone, my name is Su Chang. I'm a software engineer working for Meta. Today, together with my colleague Jin Yi, we will talk about our experience of applying traffic engineering for AI training clusters. This is the agenda of our talk today. First, we will talk about the problems and the challenges we were facing in our first generation of AI training clusters. Next, we will talk about why traffic engineering could be a good solution to our problems and the design of our traffic engineering systems. Next, we are going to talk about the effectiveness evaluation of our traffic engineering systems. Especially, we are going to compare the performance of our system to the first generation of our routing systems. Last but not least, we are talking about the, the new challenges we are facing now and also the future works. Meta has started to deploy AI training clusters based on Rocky since 2020. This is one example topology for one clusters, or we call AI zones, with up to 4K GPUs. We have employed an architecture called factory architecture. So in this topology, there are two layers of network switches, RTSW, which stands for rank training switches, and CTSW, which stands for cluster training switches. Each rank contains one RTSW and two hosts, one at the upper position of the rank, the other one at the lower position of the rank. Each host has eight GPUs and eight RDMA links connecting to the RTSW. So each RTSW has 16 downlinks in total towards the host, and each downlink has an index, which we call it slice, number from 1 to 16. So for one training clusters, we can have up to 288 ranks. The network is non-blocking. Depending on the subscription ratio at the RTSW and the link speeds, there might be 10, 16, 18 CTSWs at the CTSW layer. CTSWs are usually high radix and deep buffer switches. During our deployment, we have identified a few characteristics of AI workloads, which impose significant challenges for our traditional routing schemes. The first characteristic is called no entropy. So compared to the traditional data center workload, the number and the diversity of flows for AI workloads are usually much smaller, and the flows are usually repetitive and predictable. The second characteristic is called burstiness. So if you look at the workload from the time dimension, the flows usually exhibit the on and off nature in the time granularity of milliseconds. The last characteristic is high intensity elephant flows. For each burst, the intensity of each flow could reach up to the line rate of mix. All these characteristics make traditional routing schemes based on hashing and probability such as ECMP work less efficiently for AI workloads because the no entropy make it hard to evenly distribute the flows and the collision of elephant flows could cause very severe congestions. So in the early days of our AI training clusters, we have adopted a static routing scheme called DPR, deterministic path routing. DPR will route packets according to the destination slice or index of the RTSW downlinks. Specifically, DPR pins traffic destined for slice X of a destination RTSW to always use uplink X of the source RTSW and through CTSW X. For example, all packets destined to the second downlink of RTSW2 would always be routed through CTSW2. Aggregately, packets destined to the upper host of any rank would always use CTSW1 to 8, as this slide shows. Similarly, packets destined to any lower position host of any rank would always use CTSW9 to 16. DPR actually works well if the network has no failures and if we place a job nicely in the cluster. In this example, a job is placed on four hosts from host one to host four, which occupy two full ranks. The performance of this job would be optimal because the node would be evenly distributed on all uplinks of RTSW1, and all CTSWs will get equal amount of traffic. However, jobs are not always perfectly placed due to the fragmentation effects. For example, on this slide, a job is still allocated to four hosts, colored in red, but instead of using host 4, host 5 is selected. Now we have three hosts in the upper position of their respective rank, 
and only one host in the lower position of the rank. Now, the interact traffic originating from RTSW1 will be always assigned to use the uplinks to CTSW128, even if the uplinks to CTSW9 to 16 are idle. This will cause uneven traffic distribution and the congestion on the uplinks of RTSW1 towards CTSW1 to 8 and degrade the training performance significantly. So, DPR will lead to the performance problems of inconsistency over different job placement schemes, which was undesirable for our users. Another problem is a performance degradation and inconsistency over failures. So in DPR scheme, if a link or switch fails, the effective flow will fall back to use ECMP. For example, in this diagram, if CTSW1 fails, according to ECMP, the effective flows, which was using CTSW before, will be randomly assigned to the remaining 15 CTSWs. If the effective flow are assigned to CTSW2, flow collision will happen on the uplink to CTSW2. Even if we know that, we have spare capacity from CTSW9 to 16. Know that one congestion could cause slowdown of the whole training job. Now we have seen the static routing such as DPR has fundamental limitations in dealing with dynamic job placement and topology changes. We will see next how traffic engineering, which dynamically program routes, can be a solution to the problems. With that, I'm going to hand over the presentation to my colleague Jing Yi to talk about the design of our traffic engineering systems. Thank you, Shu Cheng. Hi, my name is Jing Yi, also a software engineer from Meta's Network AI team. And from here, I'm going to cover the system design, the evaluation, and challenges for the traffic engineering solution. Naturally, we pivoted from a static routing solution towards a dynamic solution that can adapt to changes in real time. We built a controller-based traffic engineering solution that takes in the on-demand job placement, which is later translated into network flows and real-time network topology as inputs. With both in for, T adopts the novel load balancing algorithm, constraint shortest path first, and outputs the best possible path allocation. The control plane design consists of four core components. First is the topology discovery. Here we aim to provide a real-time view of the topology of a cluster. We solve this using a topology generator service to gather the static information and a topology collector module paired with OpenR, which is an in-house link state routing protocol to project the real-time network state. Second, we require visibility of the underlying flows we plan to route. It comes in the form of job placement from the training scheduler. So with a given set GPU within any job, a static traffic assumption is used to calculate the network flows. Third, traffic engineering, the core of our logic business, consuming a real-time topology and traffic matrix and producing an optimal flow placement. And lastly is the programming part. This is fairly straightforward. It consumes the best path and translates it into the device-specific actions. Just like most traffic engineering solutions, in data plane, we operate with a concept of overlay and underlay. The overlay represents the TE overrides of optimal placement, whereas the underlay is responsible of delivering control plane traffic, as well as providing a path of last result in short retrievability. Our overlay will consist of technologies capable of providing source port destination prefix with an action of a forwarding to a next hop. Specifically, we used the exact match table provided by Broadcom's chip. While our underlay will be provided by BGP, ensuring connectivity to all prefixes. So how to choose flow granularity to be enforced by TE is one of the early design decisions we have to make. 
there is always a trade-off on the minimum flow granularity to be enforced by TE. So finer the granularity, the better allocation performance compared to the optimum. We choose the flow granularity to be next to host due to a few reasons. First, there is a hardware resource limitation of how many flows to be programmed on each rack switch. And that constrained us from using more granular flows such as nick to nick Second, nick to host fits well because the theoretical maximum of flow would not exceed rack's uplink capacity. Less granular flows, such as host to host, could lead to guarantee the congestion. The second challenge we faced is how to handle network failures with minimal convergence time. Here's an example of controller in steady state. For a flow starting from NIC1 under source rack to host 3 under destination rack, there are two entries in its switch FIP table. First one is the exact match entry programmed by controller, matching on the source interface and destination prefix. Second one is an LPM entry programmed by BGP. In this example, BGP has an ECMP group to all the uplinks for the destination rack. Note here, when exact match entry presents, its decision precedes LPM decision. Upon failure, and in the specific example, we showcase a remote link failure. The unbox agent is capable of fall back to native routing by withdrawing the exact match entry. Packets thus will follow BGP route to the destination. And this is done through a backdoor channel between the unbox programming agent with the in-house routing protocol overlap. Whenever there's a topology change, the programming agent scans through the active exact match in its rib table and withdraw entries that do not have a path to the destination. And the measured convergence time is within 2 15 milliseconds. This way, we make sure the system can operate headlessly for a reasonable time. Now that we covered the system design, we will look at how we evaluate the effectiveness of the TE solution. The first approach we used is a simulation platform. Internally, we build an event-based platform that simulates a series of AI workloads on a network of GPUs at once. And each of these workloads has some flows from GPUs to other GPUs that are composed of different paths in the network. There are a few advantages of the simulation framework. It can replicate most production scenario, and naturally, it provides more test coverage. However, the rates assigned to each flow are calculated based on the link capacity, and this can drift away from reality. So to compensate the drawback, we also run a set of predefined test cases with real hardware using Nickel Benchmark. This gives us a real-world experience and allowed us to focus on a couple representative use cases. In the slide, we showcase an imperfect job scheduling scenario, where the jobs are not utilizing all hosts under the same rack fully. And this is the case where we see congestion with a static routing, DPR, we mentioned before. So here's a case study of the benchmark result. The y-axis is completion time of 32 GPU auto or benchmark. And x-axis represents a network capacity. The left graph showcases the performance in perfect scheduling scenario, where the right portion of the graph showcases performance in a non-optimized scheduling. Yellow bar here represents a static routing solution performance, and the blue bar represents the traffic engineering solution performance. As we can see, TE provides a consistent optimal performance, whereas static routing sees longer completion time when scheduling is non-optimal and more regression as network capacity is further reduced. 
We've also got a very similar trend with the simulation result. Lastly, I'd like to touch upon the challenges and future work. We'd like to continue focus improving the rocket performance in Meta's AI training clusters. From a TE perspective, identify accurate network flow patterns to replace the current static traffic assumption is the key to an improved pass allocation. And on top of that, we'd like to budget for operational overhead by providing some extra capacity in the network. The second challenge is to scale as the workload scales. There are two main factors contributing to the scale of the TE engine. The topology size and the flow sizes. The former results to a denser graph and the latter results to more flows to be programmed in individual switch. As Meta's slogan says, the journey is only 1% finished. And that covers all the topics we have for the traffic engineering solution for Meta's AI training clusters. If you'd like to have a discussion, feel free to reach out to us through the contact info here. And thanks for listening.